afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. Oh, I'm David. So, John, uh, let's go to the movies, huh? Whoa! <laughs> that would be fun. David and I are going on a date. Now, <laughs> I didn't a, mean that. <laughs> it's an important date to the movies because we wanted to go and debunk some of the things that we see in some of these superhero movies. David, don't you love watching superhero movies? You know, I kind of do. They're fun, you know, and the violence isn't too bad. I mean, it's just kind of theatrical. <laughs> Very. You know, so, yeah, they're kind of fun to see what they come up with. And I like this movie, especially Wonder Woman, because it, it, it shows a different view of superheroes. Normally when we think of superheroes, it's men, and this one just focuses on women. With our company, our 80% owned and operated, what awesomeness. Um, but also it's Gal Gadot, who's, you know, one of my people, you know, Israeli, so uh, always cool. support Israelis. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, Gal Gadot, awesome person. So the impetus of all of this is... Whether or not these things that happen in superhero movies is true or it's BS. And what I mean by that is sometimes, sometimes, I'm trying to be nice here, most of these superhero movies, you see these big fights go and people get thrown into concrete walls and the concrete wall explodes, or people get thrown into a concrete ground and it explodes and... So is it good or is it bad science? Ah! Yes. <laughs> and that's what we're getting at today. So th that's what the three video clips are. Yeah. So, we're going to just look at what happens. We're going to compare it to some very basic engineering principles. I mean, we're not going to do a finite element. We're not going to play on the could. computer. We could. we could. We could. I mean, but yeah. just take some basic engineering principles that, you know, general public probably should know. Just, should know. Yeah. And, and on their own should say, hey, maybe that's BS. And with the amount of money. Bad science, yeah. <laughs> with the amount of money that's spent and made on these movies, you would think that they would put in a little bit more science. Like you look at, uh, there's, there's an author I like, I, I'm trying to remember his name, he wrote um, Ender's Game. Oh right. gosh, what's his name? Um, Orson Scott Card. And he actually does a lot of research into the physics right. behind some of his concepts in his books. And, well, we did, Dang it. a while back, we did Superman, and we were pretty surprised by that, huh? That was, that was pretty that good. That was Superman from the 80s, though. Yeah, that yeah. That was Christopher Reed. That was some good stuff. That right was some good stuff. So what we got, got this time? Point load. That's the first one. So we're looking at Wonder Woman, a great movie. And this part of Wonder Woman is she's fighting Ares uh, at the airport right at the end of this whole awesome movie. And what is it? She... Ares flies up into the air, and she grabs him and throws him down. Digs those fingers in. To a concrete pavement. Concrete pavement. That's a concrete pavement that is used for heavy aircraft and light aircraft. Yeah, so let's, let's divide it into pieces. Would it be possible to stick your finger down into the concrete if you were a superhero? Now, I think we assumed that the concrete strength was somewhere between 3,000 PSI. We did. To 6,000 PSI. We just assumed 3,000. So It's I'm, old, crummy, crummy concrete. Right, so I think you, a pavement, especially for airfields, normally in our day and age, uh, we're talking 1940s here, Right. but in our day and age, it's normally around 7,500 PSI, plus or minus... Sure. 500 PSI or 1,000 PSI in 28 days. Right. I'm going to give them a break. I'm going to call it 3,000. 3,000 is great, especially 1940s. 1940s. Could have been older, and it looked like a deteriorated concrete It pavement. did. It did. A little bit of exposed aggregate at yeah. the top just from where. So question one, can you stick your finger, can a superhero stick their finger down into a piece of concrete? Well, what general principle are we going to use? We're going to use strength. Right. Who's the strength guy? That'd be me, Doctor Strange. So not Doctor Strange. <laughs> a totally different universe here. Yeah. So we've got the area of the finger. Boy, that's not very big, is it, John? Mm -mm -mm. You know? So we've got load. We're going to divide it by area. That's going right. to give us the stress. Mm -hmm. We're going to compare it to the strength. How much? How much strength? The three thousand psi. Right. Yes, sir. So, fortunately for me, our ace. Staff engineer Haley has already done the calculation. What? what? <laughs> well, hopefully Haley will be a PE one day, so this is engineering work. Yeah. Hey -o. So she took the 3,000, she took the approximate area of a superhero's finger, divided P by A, and she got them to take all around 5,000 pounds. Okay. Do we think a superhero could apply 5,000 pounds with a finger? Why do we call him a superhero? 
they're they're strong, etc. Right. So especially, I mean, if you also think about it, the concrete is in Germany. Right. So they have a lot of freezing and thawing. Right. So we already have that deteriorated softer surface. Right. So bad science, BS. I don't know. It's kind of towards possible. Right. And if you look at it, not for, so David's the strength side. I'm more of the abrasive wear durability uh, side of this conversation. Right. And if you compare what he's doing to ASTMC 779. Know that one. <laughs> where we would get the exact same type of uh, a wear pattern that he's doing with his fingers. Right, good point. What he's simulating is 20 minutes of abrasive wear onto a very soft concrete in a matter of seconds. And should a superhero be able to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why we call him superhero? Duh. Duh. So, first one, point load, Aries. Ding! Yeah, I'm going thumbs up on that one. Going thumbs up on that. Yeah. Not that we like Aries. He's the enemy of them. Yeah. Good Let's job, go. Hollywood. We appreciate it. Good job, it. Hollywood. Very good job. <laughs> All right. Let's check out the next one. What we got coming up, John? This one is when Wonder Woman gets wrapped in a coffin of steel. Oh, no. And Aries, see, Aries seems like Magneto from Marvel. Because he can control steel. I just don't understand Aries' power. <laughs> I really don't. He uh, makes an entire suit of armor from scrap metal that just clings to him. And then he goes... <sighs> okay, super evil power. Super evil power. <laughs> so what he does is he, re he takes the tread off of uh, a tank, I think it is. Or he takes something off the tank. And it's basically this long wrap of steel. And he uses his powers to wrap up Wonder Woman and then squeezes her. Oh no. But in doing so, he also, it's not good enough that he's using his powers to wrap her up in steel and squeeze the life out of her. He also has to throw her into the concrete pavement. And because he does that, the concrete pavement just goes Yeah, and we see, very theatrical, we see this scene that is the shape and size and perfect image of a, of a coffin. Before we even did the math behind it, I was calling BS or bad, bad science. science. Yeah. Like foot in the ground. <laughs> so, so fortunately. For, Come on, Hollywood. <laughs> so I'm gonna go P over A on this one. P over A. I'm gonna go point point load spread out right. this time. So fortunately for me, our genius staff engineer has already run the calculations. Haley's already. <laughs> already hey already run the calculations for me. So this time she's approximated the area of the body, if you will. Gal Gadot in a steel coffin. There you go, the whole surface area. And that's pretty big. I mean, you know, look how many square inches this is going to be. We're going to compare it to the 3,000 pound strength. We're going to multiply that back through to figure out the amount of load. And guess how much that is, John? We're talking 7 million pounds. Seven million pounds. That's a lot of pounds, you know? That's <laughs> and you know, theoretically, with a shock load, yeah. you could get a higher force. Sure, you get the dynamic factor. Totally, right. but you would also see, with that much load, you would also see secondary effects. And you're only looking at the concrete. Right. What we also have to take into effect is that there's a sub there's a base course, there's a subgrade, there's some type of earth underneath it. So you're not just breaking up the concrete, you're also compacting the soil underneath. Right, we have to get that break up and lift out of the hole, we have to press down, there's just a lot of soil and structural mechanics going on here. So you know where I'm going on this one. Well, I just think seven million is shortchanging us. I would increase that by <laughs> a factor of two just because of everything underneath it. Yeah, seven million is big enough for me. Right, so I'm calling BS. <laughs> I'm calling bad science, BS. Okay, we're on to the third clip. Um, and David, this is probably one of the easiest ones to call BS on bad science. Bad science. Bad science. <laughs> um, and it's when Wonder Woman, this is after Steve dies. Uh, hey, spoiler. Spoiler. You actually wrote Steve dies. That's the scene from it's, it's the twice. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Steve dies. If you didn't know that, sucks for you, I guess. So Ares is thrown into the ground, and Wonder Woman, Kadoosh, just freaking what's so called ground and pound, just smacking him up with fists of steel. So why is this BS? Bad science. Bad science. Well, John. 
We're going to take the easy approach. We're easy go, approach. We're going to go P over A again. Mm. So, fortunately for me, our genius staff engineer has already run the calculations. That's I feel like you said that before. <laughs> <laughs> so, Haley did the calculations already. So, Good. we got that helmet. We're going to take the surface area of that helmet. Mm. We're going, so we're going to have P over A. We've got the area of the helmet. We want to find out, given the strength of 3,000, how much load it's going to take, P over A, to make that, make that dent. And we're saying that Aries has a head that has a 9.4 inch, inch height, excuse me, and a 7.3 inch width. So we did take, research on average male yeah. heads. Right, and he has, so that's an average surface area of 68.62 inches squared. There you go. So we take that times 3,000 and we come up with... 205,860 pounds. And that is not taking into account the same thing that we talked about before where there's a sub base, a, sub, a base course, a subgrade, and then soil, which, hey, we're in Germany, we could have clay stone. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know. Well, they're in a mountainous area, too. Yeah, there's no doubt. We could make it more complicated. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> that taking that into account, 205,000, that might be undershooting it by a lot. And when you look at that steel, after he gets up, he throws Wonder Woman off, he <laughs> flies up, and you see the back of his helmet yeah. is in a perfect shape. Oh, my, that's a strong helmet. That is the strongest <laughs> helmet ever. And, hey, this is just thin scrap metal. Yeah. Maybe quarter of an inch, half an inch. Right. And with that continued fatigue, that beating, right. we shouldn't see a perfect rounded shape right. in the back of the helmet. You see some dent or some type of deformation, if you will. Yeah. You know, it's Hollywood. They want to make it spectacular. They want to excite us, you know. And uh, Bad job, Hollywood. <laughs> Watch the 1982 Superman. <laughs> so, all right. So, where are we going? <laughs> Bad yeah, science. Bad science. I'm going bad science. Hey, Patty Jenkins, great job in the movie, but your science, whoever did your science <laughs> and your engineering, they did a terrible job. You should fire them. <laughs> fire them and tell them never to do that again. Stick with designing foundations. <laughs> what? You know, it's the movies, Charlie. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, listen, they made a lot of money. It took them a lot of money. How much more work would it have been to do that extra bit of science? Yeah, that's true. I, I think, you know, the general public should have some idea, some sense, some feel for how things are. I mean, we don't want them to think that a rock falling from the slope is going to make a coffin-sized shape hole in the highway. I mean, we need to keep these things in perspective for folks. I don't know if we need to. I the world will not change. Will it? It might. Yeah. Keeping the general public well informed is David's right. Is an educational responsibility of practicing engineers. See, I actually agreed with David, oh, but God. Patty, write that down. But Patty, oh, I, I agree with you a lot. But Patty, this is why you should correct what you've been doing. Bad job, and I know it's not your fault, but it was your fault for allowing these people on your job site. Fire them. Hire us. We're better. Yeah, we could do a good job. Duh. Duh. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Hopefully you learned something and had a little bit of fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete! Beat asphalt. Check out our next video on this series, which will be Justice League, and we will be analyzing three more scenes to figure out whether they're good science or BS, bad science. <laughs>